Hi, this is Kawa returning with a part 2 to the crash course on playing the Water Chaos team. We're going to touch on some topics that I felt like I didn't go enough in depth on on the first video, such as ninjas you're probably going to want to use and why, and a further look into the requirements to play this team. But first, let's do a quick recap on the team itself. As the name implies, this team is a centered around the water main, with the objective to CC lock the enemy out of the fight through the use of Shark Bomb and Neurotoxin. As I have stated in previous videos, there is a huge risk factor you have to deal with and a requirement when you're playing this team. The main risk factor you're going to face is that your water main is going to be on the front line. She's going to be target of a lot of damage and a lot of debuffs. And if your main is just not up to par and it cannot stand on the front line, this team most likely is not for you. And for those who are barely making it, you could try switching your mood from ninjutsu over to life, and that should help you ease up on the tanking a little bit. So once you pass that hurdle of being the tank in the front line, you're going to have to meet the general stat requirements. And that requirement is that your critical and your initiative has to be slightly higher than the people within your immediate vicinity of in BP. And if you can't meet those requirements, this team is not going to function the way you're going to want it to function. So we can take for example other people's stats, seeing my stats are terrible for example, seeing I have ridiculously high stats here. So we're going to use people in server 2 and we're going to start at 150k I say, 156k. We're going to use this person here at number 30. They have 12.5k initiative and 12k critical. That seems relatively high for their power range. And if it is true, then they have an overwhelming advantage over the enemies because of their higher stats. So just to double check if these stats are actually high, let's take a look at the person right above them. Let's see. So they have 10.8k initiative and 10.4k critical. Just looking at these stats, this person will probably be CC locked about 80% of the time by a shark bomb, seeing there's about almost a 2k difference in critical, and their initiative is just not high enough to compete with a shark bomb. So let's go one more further up. This person is 158k. I believe their main should be Minato? Yes. So their initiative is a little bit shy of 12k, still lower than that of the water main. And their critical is 11.4, which is roughly 600 under what the opponent's is. And that 600 actually makes a huge difference in your percent rates. That 600 could be a difference about maybe 10 to 20 percent chance increase on your critical rate. So this move one probably would not get critical hit that often, but they are threatened by it seeing that their crit is not going to be is not on par with the enemies. So we're starting to see stats that are starting to match up a little more. Let's move one more further up. This one's another 158. Let's see. So this person's stats is a lot lower than the other person, seeing this person only has 10k initiative and 9.6k critical. This means that if they were to be hit by the shark bomb, it is literally a 90% crit rate, seeing they are about 2.5k underneath the opposing um, water main. Well, this Naruto is immune though, so he can kind of get away with it, but if it was anyone else on this slot, they would definitely be CC locked every single round. 
seeing that they're slower for one, and their crit rate is just so much lower. So let's leave the 150k zone and let's move up to 180k. This person here is 188k. So this person is top of the food chain on the 180k zone. Their initiative is 13k and their crit is 12.5. Only a slight gain between the 188k and the 156k. Which is normal, seeing your power is gained through four units, not just your singular one unit. So if you are able to meet the requirement at 156k, it should not be hard to meet the requirements at 188k, seeing the difference was only uh, about a thousand, even less on the critical on the stat. So this person is at the top of the food chain. Let's see directly under them at 186. What their stats look like. Okay, so this person's stats are ridiculously lower. <laughs> this is not even 10k initiative and 8k critical. If this was not a Minato, he would forever be under chaos lock, never able to move. And as all the other units are equally low, they would always be under Chaos Lock also. Unless, you know, you're Wind Main and you have Flower Guard. But we could touch in on that later. So let's go one more lower here at uh, 182. It looks like this Minato is the move one. He has 10k initiative and 10k critical. That person at 156k would still be able to lock this person under critical, um, under chaos lock, if they were able to catch this Minato out. They would literally just have to force the dodge out, and then if a shark bomb just grazes him, he will most likely be hit by the critical, seeing he's short by 2k. So you more or less just have to find out who the top dog is within your general power bracket is, take a look at their stats, and then set yourself a goal to be about 500 to like maybe a thousand over what they have on their crit and initiative. Every point counts in this battle, and if you can get a thousand over them, you'll be pretty set more or less for your future uh, BP gains. So after, as we touched on the power differences, we can now move on to talking about ninjas. So as this team is based around the water main and her abusing her ability to lock whole teams by herself, she's going to need support units. And the best support, in my personal opinion, I rank her tier 1, is Kurnai. Oops, typing that wrong. So, Kurnai can only be considered if she is fully booked. Well, you maybe don't need her standard attack. But she absolutely must have a plus two on her mystery and a plus one on her chase. She is considered tier one because her chase actually has a built-in chaos and it links up perfectly with the shark bomb. In addition to that, she has a Genjutsu mirror that will reflect most of those pesky fire means uh, reflects back at them. So you don't have to worry about them reflecting your chaos back to your main and you're just having a bad time. And the most crucial part about her is that her mystery cancels all debuffs on the target, gives them a shield, and it heals a large amount of life. Undisputed as tier 1 support for this type of team. Your tier 2 would be Hanzo. Hanzo plays on a slightly different axis than Kurnai. He's a little more aggressive. He also has a CC on Chase. Instead of Chaos, you get the immobile and the Ignition. 
Unlike her and I, he doesn't have a mystery that helps you remove debuffs, but he does it every single turn before he moves, and it's for your whole team, versus Kurenai's Singleton. He's more aggressive than Kurenai on the grounds that one of his chase does poison, and when poison stacks up, the damage is quite ridiculous. And if you're able to pull it off every single turn, Hansel will definitely give you that damage you're looking for through the poison. The tier 3 support is Gakido. Gakido has this weird mix between what Hanzo is offering and what Kurenai is offering. But he is, I rank him underneath the two of them because he just doesn't do either of their jobs better. He has what Hanzo has where he will remove debuffs and he can do it twice a turn, assuming you have a mystery that turn or he has a double attack for some reason. But unlike Hanzo and Kurenai, he does not have a CC on chase. Like Kurenai, he does have a shield that will remove all debuffs and then it will also make you immune to debuffs for that round but he gives up the heal that Kurenai gives. So he's not as good as Kurenai, he's not as good as Hanzo, so he's ranked third in the tiers of support. So for the last one that I personally use, it's a ninja that most people don't associate with this team, and that's Omoi. People tend to forget that Watermane is a Swordsman, and Omoi has the ability to give Swordsmen immunity and shielding, which is quite interesting, seeing if you only run Omoi and the Watermane on the team as Swordsmen, he will 90% of the time tag her with it, with the exception of when he has clones out, but those clones are relatively squishy and they die really fast. And the reason why he is considered a top tier support, in my opinion, is that he has the ability to dodge. He can dodge targeted CC from units like Susanoo Itachi, who likes to CC your support and then go for your main. It doesn't really work that way with Omoi because he can't just target Omoi and CC lock him. Omoi would just dodge it. So you have to first force Omar to dodge before you can get to him, which gives you the opening for that Watermate needs. But working with Omar is a little tricky as, like I said, he has clones and those clones are also swordsmen. You would have to wait for them to die before you can get that 100% shield and debuff removal onto your main. But totally worth considering if you have him available So, the next type of units I want to talk about are the secondary DPSs. I spoke about them a little bit in the previous video, but I felt I didn't go too in-depth into what their real purpose is outside of obviously doing damage. So each one can't, it's not simply just doing damage, they also have to contribute to the team in some form or fashion. So, for example, this team here I have Susano Itachi, who I consider a secondary DPS because he has a super strong standard attack. And he also offers you a high combo chase with Amaterasu. And he offers you hard CC with his mystery. Also, I got him 4 star, so yeah, got it recently. Tobirama. Edo Tensei is another secondary DPS. He's definitely not cheap, same with Susanoo Itachi, not cheap. But he offers the same general things Itachi offers in the sense that he can cause a high combo chase, which is something you're always looking for when you're playing a water chaos team, because you want to be able to hit them with the King of Hell summon or Guy's Turtle. And, in addition, you want to hit them with a Water Trumpet, so you can get mass chaos. Because if your crit rate is just high enough, having more ways to AoE them is really good. If you don't 
have the ability to get these type of units, you will probably have to consider using the Chakra Dissection Knife for the 100% guaranteed chaos and just work your chases around that. You still ideally would want a AoE summon such as King of Hell or Guy's Turtle. But I digress. So um, for Toby Rama, he does kind of the reverse of what Itachi does in the sense that it's not his chase that is the high combo, but it's his standard that is causing this high combo. And as I said in the last video, when you cause a high combo outside of using mysteries, it can potentially lead to chases that your water main will crit on. And people who has already moved who has been chaos, that debuff carries over to the next round. And also, if you miraculously have the Edo Hashirama, you also get this nice little 40% barrier for your Konoha units. I don't expect most people to have it, but if you have it, and you have it available, he's worth considering. Another unit worth considering is the Hokage Minato. Joni just doesn't fly because he doesn't have a high um, combo standard like Minato does. Minato most of the time does a 10%, well not 10%, <laughs> a 10 combo um, standard. As long as he's standing on your move too and he's relatively buffed up, he'll do it. And he has a nice built-in dodge and a really low cost um, mystery. He also scales up just like Toby Rama does. So, as a secondary DPS, he does everything you're looking for. Another unit is the Angel Conan. I showed her in the last video. She is a little unique in the sense that you don't really associate her with Chaos Water that often. But she does have the ability to have a hard CC on Chase with her knockdown to repulse and immobile. And she does the high combo with the chase. On top of that, her standard also offers a high combo, which leads to a lot of chaos if you're doing it correctly. So that's really it for the secondary DPS. They're not absolutely required, but it is ideal to have at least one of them around. A more budget friendly option, seeing I know most people who watch these videos usually ask, is probably Sage Naruto or um, the KCM one. Either one, whichever one you can you have. The Sage Naruto is only worth considering in the sense that his Rasen Shuriken is a high combo mystery and he sets up a combo with his clone with his standard attack. And he also has a relatively tanky clone. You can try spawning it in front of um, the water main. So for example, like this, you would just move him back and put the main here and the clone will just spawn in front of her. It helps a lot when there's something blocking away for her. She takes a lot less damage. So the next type of units that I'm going to talk about is the utility units, the very situational ones. Ones that you probably want to have available depending on the meta that you have on your server, as I'm sure everyone's server is different. Like things I fight on S2, it's not the same things you guys fight on server, I don't know, 80. So utility wise, you're definitely gonna want access to someone like Han. Either Han or Kage Summit Madara. I know Kage Summit Madara is relatively pricey, so not everyone has him. So Han would be your backup choice. They both generally do the same thing that you're looking for. You're looking for the ability to remove shields and buffs. Buffs being the most important part. Seeing there are three mains now that can give immunity to either male or female or swordsmen. And when they're immune, you can't chaos them. Han or Kage Summit Madara will remove that issue for you. Madara being better, seeing that he 
breaks barriers too and his chase kind of links up in a way to um, the water means shark bomb in a way you know use a current eye and there you go there's a chase um, so the next unit I want to talk about is the Kisame shark mode Kisame is an interesting one in the sense that he was very important before they buffed the water main and made her shark bomb drain chakra too because prior to that you needed Kisame's chase to steal chakra from them so they can't retaliate to you now that your shark bomb steal chakra you don't really need him there seeing they already can't retaliate see you're draining their chakra they either queue up their mystery and get hit by the chaos or they don't queue it and they just lose all their chakra but Kasame is still worth considering in the sense that he has a high chance at a 10 hit combo which will trigger your AOE chases and his mystery breaks the barriers running into Shisoi barriers and lightning blitz teams is just terrible <laughs> and he is a pretty good answer to that issue um, for people who can afford him Suzano Kakashi is another unit that is worth considering I personally do not have him but if you can afford him he is very very good with this team he has an immobile on chase, and he has the ability to make the shark bomb undodgeable. Undodgeable shark bombs just trumps every Joni Minato there is out there. If you can't dodge it, you're probably in chaos. Uh, another unit I completely just skipped over and forgot about <laughs> is um, Edo Yugido, or the Two Tails. She also has the same ability as Han, where she removes buffs. But she also has a high combo standard. Granted though, I don't remember seeing her too often, so I don't think too many people have her, but if you do, she's worth looking into. So there are other units that are very, very niche. Such as, for example, here I have Fu. He's a little bit of before his time right now, because he gets skill books later that make him a lot better. But if you're able to protect that puppet, well, not really protect, but more like the puppet is not killed almost instantaneously, he can be very, very detrimental, seeing as they have to move to kill the puppet, and then that chaos carries over. So, in the same sense that how you do it with Naruto, you would spawn the clone in front. You could spawn the puppet behind the water main like this. So, this puppet cannot take standard attacks. But, any collateral damage from like a summon, chase, or a um, mystery that fails to kill it would cause the target to be chaos for you. It's totally before his time. It's worth playing with if you have him, but I completely cannot use him yet because there's just too many strong people at 260k who just blow up the puppet instantly. Another unit I talked about in the first one is Skillbook Itachi. You cannot consider him unless you absolutely have all his books. You must have Tsukiyomi at plus two, where it costs zero chakra and it's a prompt. And most importantly, he must have the rotation of heaven and earth. He serves a niche role in the sense that he counters opposing water mains who are trying to do the same thing you're trying to do. Because when you throw a shark bomb and he gets hit by the chaos, or well, just a crit, He'll send the chaos back. Can't stop it. You're gonna have to hit him eventually, right? So, if they're also taking the KOH and the water trumpet chase, there's a high chance he's gonna just randomly get tagged of a crit and he'll just reflect that chaos right back at you. And then on top of that, he also has a nice 10 combo chase, like his Susano form. Uh, and he plays this weird 
off tank type of playstyle because when Tsukiyomi's out he has a really high rate of dodging so he plays this weird pseudo tank type of role which makes him really interesting for use. So I also showed a glance at what my current team I'm playing at right now is. I already explained the Susanoo Itachi and the Tobirama. This Tsunade here is very interesting in the sense that I'm still testing her. Uh, don't even attempt it unless you have her mystery at plus two and her heal at plus two and her neurotoxin at least at plus one. And as you can see, mine's is definitely not complete. I'm still missing neurotoxin plus two, spoke and the chase plus two, but um, getting there slowly, can only farm two instances of it every day, but getting there. So she's interesting in the sense that her mystery is kind of like Omois, where she will remove your debuff and then make you immune to debuffs. But the immunity lasts for two rounds, which makes it unique. The two round of immunity for a water immune is very, very serious. And then the other interesting part of her is that she also has a neurotoxin passive that is slightly different than water mains in the sense that she gains more crit and more damage each time she crits. So in a normal situation, she should be able to attack three times around if done properly. One from her standard and two times on her chase. If her stats are high enough and she just randomly lands a crit, she will progressively be able to land more and more crits, making herself stronger. And by doing that, it helps Watermain in the mission to CC lock everything. It's very unique. Um, I'm still testing it right now. Uh, I'll come back with findings in another video, but I will not have that until I finish at least maxing out her Neurotoxin passive, because right now it's only at 10% and when fully booked, it is a 30% extra crit hit rate gain. So all the ninjas I proposed are not mandatory, not at all. You just need to consider what you have available to you. The team is super flexible. You're able to do almost anything with it. I clearly have shown that I can do a, a Sasuke Madara Tsunade team and I shown a Ampu Black Ops team for fun. As long as you meet the requirements that I mentioned such as the stats and the ability to be a frontliner, you can play around with the rest as long as the team stays coherent and you stay within the structure that I propose. You're definitely going to need at least one support unit there to back her up Ideally, you would have two or one and a half DPS units to help out with damage, seeing the damage is very low on the team. You could go over two supports. It doesn't hurt, but not really necessary. Um, and yeah, this is my crash course on the team. Uh, let me know what you think.